Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and unfortunately, I can't do the video I was planning on doing today for you guys, which was a Ryzen memory uh, test, basically an overclocked Ryzen 7 CPU uh, with memory at 2133 MHz and then also at uh, 3000 or 3200 megahertz. That's what I was planning on doing because you guys were really keen to um, have me test that out. Unfortunately, I ran into some issues. So the rig I was testing this on was the Playtech Assassin, which I um, covered in my previous video. Now that system is fine, it's just the motherboard, the ASUS B350 Prime Plus, and it was having some problems. So no matter what I did, I could not get the memory to go above 2133 MHz. It just wasn't happening. And trust me guys, I tried everything, everything. So first I thought, oh, it probably just needs a BIOS update or something. Went on ASUS's website, sure enough, they had a new BIOS update, which said something about system memory uh, performance enhancements. So I thought, fantastic, that'll fix the problem. I went to flash the BIOS, and it got stuck halfway through, so I had to reset the computer, and obviously that sort of bricked it, so I had to uh, flash it back. Did that, and then reflash it again to the newer BIOS, and it finally worked, so I was like, great, now I'll be able to do it. Nope, no difference. Couldn't go above 2133, just get stuck in restart loops. The post uh, hangs for ages and it would just you know, always go back to auto and 2133. So I thought we'd well, better change memory then. So uh, Playtech was uh, very nice and gave me a spare set of memory to test out. So I had uh, some Corsair Vengeance and some G-Skill memory uh, DDR4, both 16 gigabyte kits to test out with it. That didn't make any difference whatsoever. Still had the same problem. Okay, so maybe it just needed quite a bit of voltage to run through it. No matter how much voltage I put in the memory, it made no difference. It couldn't do it. Uh, then I thought maybe it needs XMP enabled. So I went, enabled XMP. That didn't make any difference either. Okay then. And I thought maybe this is something wrong with the BIOS. We'll do it in Ryzen Master. I'd read around that a few people had done that with these, uh, well, tried it, attempted to do it with these B350 Prime Pluses. Tried to do that, and it didn't work either. Um, I'm not the only one. I read around the internet, and a lot of people are having this problem. So, Zeus, really, guys, just sort out your aim for motherboards because they're just, everyone's having so many problems with them. I don't think it's the board itself in terms of actual hardware. It's just, there's optimizations, there's fixes, there's bugs that need to be figured out. Just, you guys really, really need to figure this out because it's a it's a big problem right now. Anyways, so I thought I'd better bring you guys a video. And another thing you guys have been asking me for was a Ryzen retest with an AMD graphics card. A few people commenting that the NVIDIA card I was using, the GTX 1080, is the most powerful card I could get. Um, which is my personal graphics card, they were saying, well, that favors Intel. Okay, all right, if you, if you think that. So um, generally when we test CPUs, you want to use the most powerful GPU you have available to you um, because you do not want to run into GPU bottlenecking, which is why you don't see most tech reviewers running things like 480s or 1060s when they're doing CPU testing. You want to trend towards things like 1070s 1080, 1080 Ti, Titan XPs, things like that. That's what you see the majority of the tech reviewers do. And that's the reason for it. But you guys asked for it, so I thought I'd do it. Now, uh, both of these CPUs I was testing with my 6900K against a Ryzen 1700, which would not go above 3.8 on all eight, so that might have been the motherboard as well. So I set both CPUs to 3.8, make it fair on all eight CPUs and the memory at 2133 to make it fair once again. The uh, specs for the uh, Ryzen rig was the Playtech Assassin, so of course that came with the AMD Spire cooler. It did a decent job, actually quite impressive with, uh, quite impressed with it. Of course that ASUS B350 Prime Plus motherboard, some uh, G-Skill DDR4 16 gigabyte memory, it's actually rated for 3000 megahertz, but you know, we're stuck at 2133. And FSB uh, 750 watt gold PSU, 
And yeah, that's the, pretty much the same as uh, when I did the Playtech Assassin video previously. Um, all the same specs. The only difference there is I switched the memory out and of course a different GPU, the RX 480 instead of the RX 470. Now the broad rally machine is my personal rig. So this has the Corsair H115i liquid cooler. Some people are saying it's unfair I'm using a liquid cooler against an air cooler. It doesn't, as long as there's no throttling, it makes no difference, guys, in terms of the performance. Honestly, the reason why you have liquid coolers is because it gives you that better cooling, which gives you more headroom to then overclock. But if we're only running at 3.8, it's not going to matter anyway. Uh, Motherboard-wise, MSI X99 Game Pro Carbon, really like it. The uh, RAM, Corsair Dominator Platinum, DDR4, 16 gigabytes, and the PSU in my rig is the Corsair HX1000i Platinum PSU, and they're both running uh, Intel SSDs. Now, the other thing I changed was the RX 480's temp target uh, is set to 80 degrees um, from default, so it'll get to 80 degrees, and then it'll start to throttle itself a little bit. I raised that up to 90 because I didn't want to see any thermal throttling, and in both tests, uh, the RX 480 ran up to a maximum of 88 degrees Celsius, and I saw um, no throttling there, so that was good. Also, just something I recommend you do if you have a reference RX 480, that is. So let's jump into the benchmark. So I only benchmarked up to 1440p because 4K is pointless. Um, with the RX 480, it'll just be GPU bottlenecking. But even then, uh, I, I believe that in a lot of these tests, there was GPU bottlenecking. But you guys can see the results for yourself and make judgments for yourself. <laughs> So yeah, as you guys see, the results are almost identical. Now, from my experience and from what I saw, because the GPU load was very, very high, it was always hovering about 99%. Um, that is a full-on GPU bottleneck for the fact that they're that close together. Because as you remember, when we previously did, um, if you go back and watch my first Ryzen video, um, the with the 1080 you saw quite a bit of difference between broadwell e especially in games like dirt rally which is an amd game by the way um you saw quite a bit of a difference there however regardless of that another thing we can take from it is that if you are running if you are running a mid-level gpu such as the uh, rx 480 then it won't really matter that much what CPU you are running to the same degree as if you're running one of those higher end, graphic, uh, higher end graphics cards. So yeah, you can take it as that, you can take it that way as well if you want. But um, yeah, this is sort of like maybe a little bit of a controversial thing to talk about because some people might say, well, it wasn't the GPU bottleneck. They just matched with an AMD graphics card. And other people say, no, it was a GPU bottleneck. I'm telling you guys, from what I saw, it did very much seem like a GPU bottleneck from uh, all the GPU-Z stuff I was reading. So that's my interpretation of it. But of course, Ryzen is so divisive. If I say anything like that, people explode at me. Um, so it's like every tech reader right now is walking on eggshells. So yeah, that's what I make out of uh, this video. But hey, you guys wanted to see it, so those are the results. If you're running an RX 480 right now, then yeah, sure, go for a uh, Ryzen 7 CPU. You'll see the same gaming performance as if you upgraded to a Broadwell E uh, CPU, which I would probably not recommend to anybody right now. If you're going to go up to um, an 8-core CPU, I'd just go with some of the Ryzen 7 CPUs. 
Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.